Um, so today I'll be talking about word final inserted vowels in Italian and their perception and syllabicity. Um, so I will start uh, by talking a little bit about the phenomenon and the background. Um, then I'll go about talking about the experiment and then results and discussion. Okay, so the aim of the talk uh, is to basically to answer to the following questions. Are insert schwas in consonant final words perceived by Italian native speakers as syllabic? And what I when I talk about schwas, because schwas are not really fun, a phoneme in Italian, I talk about when I say some, when Italian speakers say something like jet, right? The, the uh sound at the end of consonant final words. So um, in consonant final words, consonant final words might be followed by an insert schwas in Italian. So when we have something like jet. Um, I might not have it, right? So I hope that you can hear it. This is an Italian speaker saying jet. Jet. Right. Jet. Or I might have it. I might have a final schwa at the end. Something like this. Jet. Jet. Um, so uh, when we talk about, oh, and I would like to add that these schwas at the end of words are not perceived by native speakers, and native speakers are not aware that they're producing them. Um, so when we talk about insert vowels, uh, the literature has distinguished two groups. The first one is canonically epenthetic vowels, and the second group is intrusive vowels. Um, so epenthetic vowels are considered phonological vowels. They, when, when they're inserted, they constitute um, the nucleus of a syllable. They're not optional because they are inserted to um, repair a uh, violated structure, and they usually have a fixed quality. Intrusive vowels, on the other hand, are considered phonetic vowels because um, they do not constitute nucleosyllabi, um, syllabus, syllables, okay. <laughs> they're optional because um, their uh, their insertion might depend on speech rate, for example, um, and they're, uh, they have a variable quality or, or schwa. And uh, by Hall's criteria, like Hall's is the one that uh, uh, studied intrusive vowels extensively, and usually she finds them only in consonant clusters. And this is pretty important because um, in Italian, they actually occur in word final position. Um, so comparing epenthetic vowels, intrusive vowels, and Italian word final vowels, what we find is that uh, Italian word final vowels have a schwa quality, so they resemble intrusive vowels in this matter, uh, they're optional, so their insertion might or may not occur. Um, and as for their syllabicity, we're not really sure yet, um, because we do, we, we had kind of like a controversial status here. We have some authors that consider them canonically pathetic vowels. They're inserted to repair a violated, a violated structure. Um, which is basically no coda in word final position. But we also have some authors that consider this an intrusive vowel that is um, basically part of the release of the consonant, and it's basically inserted to aid the perceptibility of the word final consonant. Um, so this study is a perception study, and um, the question that we're trying to answer is whether native Italian speakers will perceive this was as syllabic, as nu syllab uh, nuclei of syllables. Uh, so I'll talk about um, my experiment now. Um, so I had uh, 13 native Italian speakers from Veneto, which is a region northeastern of Italy, and I only um, included speakers from this region uh, because um, Italian have uh, local languages that might they might affect the syllable structures of standard Italian or like the regional Italian spoken in that region. Uh, and then and my participants were age 19 to 36 years old. Um, so in the in the experiment, uh, speakers had to listen to consonant final nonce words uh, with a word final insert vowels and they had two blocks. They had to indicate how many syllables they were perceiving by pressing a button. And they also had an additional task. They, uh, in the first block, they had to repeat as they were going on what the stimuli that they were hearing. Um, so they would hear something and then they had to repeat it out loud. 
Uh, so this is an example of the nonce words, right? So all nonce words uh, add e as a vowel and then had a, a final voiceless stop, and then they were labial coronal or dorsal. So this is an example. This is Vic, and you should. And this example have the schwa is seventy five milliseconds long. Let's see if I can play it. Vic. Um, so the schwa. Uh, could have had five durations. It was either absent, 25 milliseconds long, 50 milliseconds long, 75 milliseconds long, or 100 milliseconds long. So I analyzed 773 total tokens. Um, of these, 93% were perceived as monosyllabic and 7% as disyllabic. Um, the duration of the schwa had an almost significant effect. Um, so speakers tended to identify as disyllabic nonce words with longer schwas, but this was not statistically significant. OK, I will walk you through this graph. Um, so what you see on the y-axis is percentages, and what you see on the x-axis is basically the speakers it themselves. The green line represents how many, um, the percentage of word final schwas that they produce while repeating the stimuli aloud. Um, and the blue line is how many, the percentage of the syllables they identify throughout the task. Um, so one would assume that if they were aware and they would, could hear the schwa that they produced, that these two lines would behave similarly, but they do not. I also found a place effect. Um, so dorsal final words are three times more likely to be perceived as monosyllabic than coronals and labials. And I don't really have an explanation for this yet. And I would love your input on this. Um, my tentative explanation is that um, this is uh, not normal. And I actually found uh, four dorsals along VOT. Um, so Italian, we don't really talk about VOT in Italian because we don't have aspirated consonant, but for dorsal, I actually found a VOT up to 70 milliseconds long, which might have influenced the perception of word final schwas. Okay, so what we found in this experiment is that speakers judge the stimuli to be monosyllabic 93% of the time. Uh, the increasing duration of the inserted schwa was not a significant factor in their judgment, and there was no correlation between how many, the, the percentage of uh, word final schwa production and their syllable count judgment. So from this, we can assume that Italian speakers can't perceive a syllabic difference between nonce words that have a schwa at the end and that those that don't. Um, so we can and since they usually uh, perceive this as monosyllabic, we can say that insert vowels do not fill a nucleus position. Um, so when we compare it with Hall's criteria, if we say that Italian word final vowels are not syllabic, uh, they actually really resemble intrusive vowels. Um, so insert vowels do not fill a nucleus position and following Hall criteria, they resemble intrusive vowels. And this is possibly an extension of uh, intrusive vowels because in contrary to how that found them only in, in consonant clusters, we actually find them in word final position. Thank you. Thank you, Veronica. Any questions? Yes, Marco. Hello, Ver Veronica. Uh, Thank you for the talk. I was wondering whether you have considered um, putting this this word. You have elicited the words in isolation, I suppose. Is it whether you have considered to put it into a, at the end of a question, for instance, or when I don't know which variety of Veneto you are analyzing, but uh, in some varieties, for instance, questions have a very complex uh, international contour, international boundary tone at the end. So it, uh, truncation, uh, final truncation or, redu or reduction in some contexts uh, cannot happen. And so you are obliged 
to to fully fledge this schwa somehow fully fledged well right. no but, but to pronounce this, this vowel to, to give it a, a certain duration you can have higher values of duration and if you put a post nuclear sentence like for instance uh, uh, did you have a jet yesterday something like that you can even trigger uh, the um, the perception of syllabicity perhaps in some more expert oh. listeners i don't know i see um so i actually avoided a raising intonation because i i read some some literature that said um that a raising intonation will uh trigger at least the insertion of a schwa uh, there's a lot okay. of things that actually trigger it right so um okay. if the word final consonant is voiced for example you're more likely um to get um word final schwa uh, but also experience it with english for example if you are a more competent english speakers for example you insert the schwa, the schwa less so it's gradient right so um even the, the production of my speakers range between zero to 97 percent actually um so i had uh my my ranges were all over the place um but i actually i, I wanted to restrict basically the the factors influencing the, the the appearance of schwa as much as possible because i had already done some research that um that it, so i already knew that some factors would influence the appearance of it um actually i didn't really um at the end of experiment none of my speakers were aware of the schwa sound and i had to make it very apparent for them to actually like catch it um but throughout the experiment i saw um, that some speakers were maybe starting to catch on it a little bit because um, sometimes their production would increase throughout the experiment. The, their production of schwa would increase a little bit throughout the experiment um, because they maybe were starting to hear um, the stimuli and they were trying to match it phonetically. But they were still pressing one because they were still analyzing it as monosyllabic. Okay, so you were already getting uh, many schwas in, in, uh, well, in production, really, so you don't need to force that. You, you need the other well, way around. It really. Depends, it really depends on the speaker, right? Some speakers mm -hmm. never always pressed one and never produced a schwa, a schwa. and some speakers had only a hundred percent, always on almost a hundred percent schwas in production. It's really gradient. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thank you, Professor Bodinis. Well, thank you very much, Veronica. Uh, a, a clarification question. Mm -hmm. uh, the inserted vowel, what kind of vowel and how have you inserted it? Um, so, um, it's, so I argue it's a phonetic vowel. So I argue it's, that it's not really inserted in the canonically way, because usually when you talk about inserted vowels, you think of inserting a vowel to repair a violated structure, right? Like um, when you have a constraint that says no uh, consonant cluster, so you will insert a little vowel um, to like repair this constraint. But what I argue is that it's actually like part of the release of the consonant. Um, so I actually think that it's this, this schwa vowel that Italians insert is not, is not a phonological vowel. It's just uh, basically some uh, formants that are produced to help the perceptibility of the consonant. Uh, well, here I, I, I'd say a couple of things. Mm -hmm. If you have consonant, vowel, consonant in Italian, you have right. a closed syllable. Yes. And then uh, if this, the, ins the, the, the intrusive vowel, the inserted, is not phonological, that mm -hmm. means that the, that the vowel of the syllable will be a little bit shorter because it's a closed syllable. Otherwise, if the inserted vowel is phonological, the former vowel will be a little bit longer because it will be under an open syllable, right? Right. So what I did, I 
I did uh, also an upper production study on this. And what I found is that uh, the vowel, uh, the, the syllable, the, the nucleus of the syllable was actually shorter, five milliseconds shorter than uh, normal words. Um, and then, uh, so I, I actually think that it, it wasn't longer, right? So it wasn't an open syllable. It was still a closed syllable and it was even shorter than normal. Well, you must be very careful because, because if, you, if you investigate in a word context, just single words, then you have all those final lengthenings or whatever variability. But then if you put it in the middle of a carrier sentence, then the consonant goes always with the next vowel. I mean, the right. final consonant. So, so okay, so this, to consider this, is of this is another study and the words that the speakers produced were put in sentences, but they were in um, sentence final position, all of them. Uh, so the I, I so I analyzed both nonce words with a consonant uh, that were like with a word, consonant final words, and then um, and so so the uh, so they were comparable, right? I analyzed both Italian words like letto, for example, and then um, nonce words like nap, um, and what I found was the it's still it's still not syllabic but this is another study <laughs> okay i would suggest we will hear we, we will have you some other time in the near future because you see please remember in greek we have a pathetic vowels which we all hear right and they are syllabic clearly syllabic and yes. you can test it with stress assignment as well, okay? Mm -hmm. But a few years ago, we discovered that we had as well uh, intrusive, I mean, mm. not phonetic vowels. It was a, a surprise. And those phonetic vowels just uh, inserted here and there, you don't hear them. So. Right. So you'd better, I would suggest that you analyze, you check with spontaneous speech, let's say from the television, because there you have free speech and there you can, you can see things, how this, I call it at this time uh, uh, ghost vowels. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, you don't hear, you don't see or what you don't perceive, but you see them in the screen of your computer, right? Right. So that's Most exactly what mm -hmm. That's so exactly what it mean. might be like this. You have ghost vowels in Italian, but you may have uh, pathetic real syllabic vowels depending uh, on the context, on the situation. So probably you should be a little bit open about this issue. Right. I mean, I did analyze, like I did look at both perspectives, right? But the fact that it doesn't influence any uh, phonological process, like stress assignment, for example, is not influenced by uh, the presence of this word final vowel. Um, and it doesn't appear to be syllabic. So when it doesn't really participate in phonological processes, I would would think and, and the fact that speakers don't perceive it they're not aware they're saying it um it's optional all of this it's a schwa which is not really a phoneme in italian all of this makes me think that um it's it's an intrusive vowel it's it's a very interesting area we would like to hear you again in the near future thank you very much thank you very much indeed bye-bye <laughs>